This video is sponsored by Newtype. They're one of the largest online hobby stores where you can get your hobby kits, tools, and everything you need. Link in the description. Check them out. What's up guys, this is Justin from Studio G and this is Tutorial Tuesday. Today, let's look at how do you start to kit bash. Let's do this. Well, first thing first, let us look at what is kit bashing. Kit bashing basically means that you take two kits together and you bash them together. Or maybe three kits, or maybe four kits, or maybe five, or even ten kits. Then you just bash them all together, and here we go, you got this thing called kit bash. But all that sounds very easy to do, it, in actual fact is that it is very very hard to do it, right? You can get it, you can do it anytime you want with any kind of kits, but the hardest thing that you'll face is to make it harmonize. You gotta be really creative on what goes where and how do you kit bash it together, and also you need definitely need the skills to do it too. So it is quite high level. It's not about just swapping out the legs for the body or for the body, swapping out for the head and all that. It's not about about swapping parts out but it's more about enhancing the kit that you already have with other kits make it better harmonizing that's the key and to do that without causing too much damage to your wallet I personally I will buy secondhand kits damage kits or even use extra parts from other kits so that I can bash them together into the kit that I'm currently customizing and that's a chicken it's morning right now. And without further ado, let's look at some tools that you need. When it comes to tools, let's not forget about these awesome nippers here. They are used to cut up parts, not only from the runners, and obviously you can cut off like small parts from the kit bashing parts that you're working on. Other than that, let's not forget about sanding sticks. Well, this is really, really helpful because it will not only smooth and really join up the parts. For example, the parts that you super glue this, all this will definitely smooth them out. And other than that, if you have some parts that really needs to be precise instead of using a hobby knife, you can sand them down precisely. Definitely don't forget about drill bits and drills. These are model hand drills. Those are really, really cheap that goes down to millimeters. And then don't forget about your knife, your hobby knife. These will really, really help you to cut the parts up to the size that you want to fit to the part that you want. And definitely a scriber that is really, really important as well because making your own custom line is really, really important for you to join and harmonize and blend together the parts that actually don't belong together. Definitely some Tamiya cement and super glue. All these would help you to join your parts together and these are freaking awesome. Just to show you guys some example, right here I have my wing here. One of the kit bashing part is actually this part right here. It's actually a double layer, but this part right here is actually from the Mach 2. It's not from the wing itself. So by combining this, I'm actually adding a little bit of height so that it matches with the shoulder. This is what I'm calling as harmonizing the part itself. So little minute details like this will actually really good because it really does help harmonizing the entire look of the wing and when it comes to the wing itself this is where i focus on i do believe that having only one wing is a little bit lackluster so i went out and purchased another gundam wing but the rg version because i would want to have a smaller wing to act as a secondary wing so that it looks more fruitful it looks more compact it looks more awesome i would say i think by combining them two i do have another part this is from the mg fast and to fill up the gap here i use some thrusters from the mg fast as well and then this is the shield from the rg wing so by combining all of them they all look complete instead of like one bulky thing in on top of another right now i've created this harmonized look on the wing itself Another example here is the Zaku with the feet thruster. The thruster here, I would like to insert a thruster here, but there's no way to cover it up without looking really ugly. So I took this thruster flap literally from the Mach 2, sent it down to the shape of the leg, and then attach it permanently to the Zaku itself so that it can house some of the thrusters. One more thing right here is by using the missiles from the fast and actually filling the gaps right here to make it look more badass on the magazines. On the magazines, yeah. Tip 
number one, definitely before you start kid bashing, try to mock up or try to conceptualize all your ideas into a pen and paper, which is what I go to. So if you're not using pen and paper, you can certainly use Photoshop and stuff like that. Try to Photoshop in, see how it looks, and then only commit to the idea. Tip number two, always try to make your kit bash as removable as possible. For example, when you're not using the bowl, you can slip it back into the wing and it became part of the wing again. And if you want to use it, just detach it. So you got to make sure that you have all of this done instead of gluing everything together and make it permanent. Tip number three, don't be afraid to mix all the Gundams with different storylines together. For example, what I did with my Axia. My Axia was in the Axia timeline and then I mixed it with the Ailstrike backpack. Why? I mean like, yeah, it's a no-no definitely for a lot of people, for a lot of the purists. They will say they'll hate it, but personally, I don't really care because it's all about you your creativity, what you like, and at the end of the day, that Gunpla is sitting on your shelf, not his shelf. Tip number four, definitely use super glue or Tamiya cement to really, really bond those parts together if you really want it to be permanent. For example, the biggest difference between super glue and Tamiya cement is that super glue is an adhesive agent while Tamiya cement will literally melt the part and bond them together. While super glue is easy to use and the curing time is really, really fast, typically between seconds, Tamiya cement will take around a couple of minutes to half a day to really, really cure. So it depends on your workload, it depends on how fast you want to complete it. If you have time, definitely go for Tamiya Cement every single time. So that's all for this tutorial. I hope you guys learned something today and definitely don't forget, never stop building. This is Justin from Studio G. I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.